Good morning. It's Thursday, March 5th, 2015. This is Tech Talk Today, episode 140. And I don't know what I was thinking. Today's a double snap day. We're doing two tech snaps on this Thursday. So what we're going to do is sort of a condensed, quick episode of Tech Talk Today. A couple of headlines that caught my attention. We're even starting a little bit early to make room for Tech Snap. So uh, let's jump into the first story that I, I said if this happened, I would say this might legitimately be the changed Microsoft. The devil's in the details, but to jump into it, let's bring in our mumble room. Time appropriate greetings, mumble room. Hello. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> hey, guys. Thanks for being here a little early today. It was kind of impromptu. Uh, so this one caught me by quite a bit of surprise. The Xbox has been one of the most closed-off platforms ever out there. And I've always thought, what a huge waste. They have a built-in app store. They have a huge user base. The consoles are fairly powerful, like when you compare them to phones, etc. cetera. Uh, so th- when, uh, when Microsoft announced that they're actually shipping an SDK out to developers to allow any developer to build apps for the Xbox... That caught my attention. The details, though, well, here they are. Uh, So the software maker has provided a private SDK in the past. This is something that's been known for a while, especially if you're going to make a game for the Xbox. Now developers will be able to create apps using this new SDK in coming months using the same Windows 10 universal app stuff. So the same app platform that, uh, that helps span PCs and tablets will also work on the Xbox One. And I had said a couple of weeks ago, if Microsoft did this, this would be a huge, huge move for them. This is a major change. Uh, Now, of course, at the moment, this SDK is only in the hands of what they call managed partners, according to Microsoft. Soon it'll be in the hands of a broader set of developers. The SDK also includes access to Xbox Live services, and Microsoft's created a new tier of Xbox Live that is designed to allow any developer to engage with the Xbox Live community. Uh, And so the idea would be eventually that you use this universal app platform, and I guess you could distribute an app for the Xbox. What they're not telling us yet is what's the approval process look like? How long does it take to get in? And what are my options as far as pricing and things like that? But this, to me, always seemed like the the, the part that Microsoft wouldn't close. Like Like they almost had the full circle, and they couldn't close this part in, and now they've got the Xbox... Now that's a little compelling. You can write one application that runs on the desktop, the phone, and the console. I don't know how good it would be, but it's a big move. Anybody have any thoughts in the mumble room? I mean, it sounds like it'll be a pretty cool thing. Yeah, it it sounds kind of cool, but then again, you have this thing that if you have all these PC apps, why don't just use a PC? Well, you know, I I, I look at it things like, boy, wouldn't it be great if if we could have a Jupyter Broadcasting app on the Xbox? Would that be pretty cool, right? Or or other podcast networks and others like look at the uh, you know there's there is legitimate purposes to have some apps on a TV. Usually the usually they all suck though, but with a console you've got some serious horsepower and some real 3D performance to actually make the menus zing and put some actual performance you know like some some whiz bang in that app. I don't know. Yeah, like maybe a Netflix app or something. Well, they've already got that though, right? They've already got that. But yeah, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, this with all things Microsoft, I still like to wait and see. But this is definitely noise in the right direction. Uh, So, of course, GDC is going on right now. And so that means we're getting a lot of stuff out of Valve, including a ton of games that uh, are going to be moved over to Steam OS uh, and some really big, uh, uh, like top t- uh, title games like uh, Call of Duty. I'm sure you're pretty excited about Call of Duty, uh, but also things like Torchlight 2, uh, Payday 2, Shadow of Motor, uh, Batman, Arkham Asylum all coming to Linux this year. On top of that, Valve uh, also uh, has, uh, you know, had a had their, uh, um, what do they call it? I forget, shoot, I'm forgetting the name. But HTC is making the VR headset. And uh, it looks interesting. You know, it looks interesting. And then you've got uh, Samsung that's doing their Gear VR that snaps in with the Note 4. And they announced when they when they announced the uh, Samsung Galaxy S6 that there'd also be a VR headset shipping for that eventually. So there's been a lot of VR talk at uh, GDC this week, which has been um, fun to follow because it's really hard to tell right now where VR is going to go. One person's pretty sure where it's going to go. John Carmack, you've probably heard of John Carmack before. He was talking at uh, GDC. He was giving one of the big presentations, as he do, and uh, he thinks it's really big. Uh, He was up there to specifically talk more about the Gear VR, which I guess John has been working on since he... Uh, started working at Oculus. Uh, he titled his talk The Dawn of Mobile VR. And he talked about the current state of Gear VR. And he thinks that mobile VR, even though it's less powerful, is more important than PC VR. Uh, he said Oculus got its start developing headsets to be used for personal computers, like the Oculus Rift. But the Gear VR, which runs off an attached phone, has been Carmack's main focus since he joined the company in 2013. He reiterated a point previously made at Oculus's own conferences in September. 
Virtual reality running off a smartphone greatly broadens the addressable market for the technology. The PC may be more powerful, but mobile phones point to a world with a billion people using virtual reality headsets, Carmack said. Hmm. Carmack declined to give any more specific time window for the Gear VR's launch, the one with the S6 later. Uh, but said when Samsung launches this next Gear VR, the one that works with the Galaxy S6, Samsung's going to go all out and do the full blitz, he says. This is going to be their big consumer push. When everything is ready, ads are going to be everywhere, he says. Oculus is going forward as hard as we can, trying to sell as many units as possible with the next Gear VR. That's going to be their big push, he says. So we'll see. HTC Vive. That's what I was trying to remember. The HTC Vive is the HTC VR one from Valve. Uh, so some big VR stuff. Do you guys, uh, what do you think? Uh, is... Uh, is mobile the future of VR? Hmm. Nobody wants to take it. You know, I'll tell you this. I just, I just see people walking into poles with their headsets on. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a. Even if you stayed in the room, there's a big difference between the uh, Galaxy Gear VR and the Oculus SDK. The Oculus SDK has like four wires coming off of it. You got to have two USB ports and an HDMI port. You have to have them all hooked up. You have to have a driver installed. Right? It's, it's a lot more complicated. The Gear VR is you snap a Note 4 into a headset and you're done. Everything else, there's no wires. It's it's much more elegant. So, uh, yeah, as far as approachability goes, and you also got to remember consumers, well, they care about graphics, but how many of us have a family member who watches SD channels on their HD television? They don't care that much at the end of the day. And I think one of the reasons I say that is I think uh, we've all been thinking about the gaming context. But there is actually, and John Carmack mentions this in uh, the Recode article, there is actually a huge potential for entertainment, virtual reality entertainment, even if it was just the most immersive 3D movie. Because you've got that VR headset on, you got them headphones on, man, you can be in that 3D reality, like, uh, it would be the best, you don't, need, you don't need a huge TV with 3D, with goggles. You just get the VR headset, right? And, and then Samsung has a store, they could sell the 3D movies right onto the phone, and boom, they're done. I mean, they could make all their money probably just doing that because there's you know, who knows. But I think that's just the beginning. There's telecommunications, you know, like Skype on steroids using VR. There's obviously the gaming potential. There's all kinds of uh, educational uh, capabilities. And if it's all on the phone, uh, it's way easier to use. It'd be easier to use in a classroom. It's easier to use for uh, the elderly. It's easier to use for non-technical people. So maybe it is the mobile version. And the mobile processors and CPUs and GPUs, you know, et cetera, et cetera, they all get better and better all the time. Um, I don't know. I think that you missed out on things like maybe on-site tech support for if you have very skilled people that work at an office and you can have some kind of cameras attached to guys out in the sure. field. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could also see, I mean, let's not let's not discount Microsoft's HoloLens. I think it's a, I think it's more of vaporware at the moment, but it yeah, I could especially see for that kind of work task, Hololens working really well. So yeah, uh, so uh, next uh, tomorrow, next episode, uh, Angela will be joining me in studio, and uh, I, I I encourage you to join us in the Mumba Room. We'll have a great episode. I think we're gonna I don't know I haven't asked her yet, but I think we'll do our Kickstarter of the week then and i might try to do a health update on my because it's been a couple of weeks since we've done that and uh, yesterday i went and got acupuncture and it was an, it was a very interesting experience i had something very interesting happen during it and uh, i really want to share it with you so i'll talk about that tomorrow too uh, and i would normally i was actually thinking about maybe doing the health updates on thursdays uh going forward but with uh, the double tech snap this week it just doesn't quite work but I, it's gonna be uh, a fun one i hope I, I had another update with lauren and i talked about some of the some of the issues i'm still running into and she had some really good advice too so i want to try to clip that out for you guys i'll have to try to find time with the busy schedule but that should be a good episode tomorrow with all of that should be a packed episode of tech talk today speaking of tech snap just like a couple of days left the uh, tech snap 200 shirt relaunched Enough people uh, said, I want one. And so it relaunched, and it's just going to be available until March 8th. So it's three days as of this recording. You go to teespring.com slash techsnap to get the brand new TechSnap logo shirt. We have it in a women's tee, uh, a hoodie, and also a great long sleeve shirt. You can find that over at teespring.com slash techsnap. Just three days left, and then it's all done. Uh, all right, there you go. We're going to leave it at Also, if you're an Unfiltered listener, go check out the uh, Patreon. There's something new for you Unfiltered supporters over there and also a new pledge level to make it a little bit easier you can also support uh, the entire network over at patreon.com slash today 
Okay, we're going to end it there so that way I can go get ready for today's text nap. Sorry for the short episode, but to make it up for you, I'm going to end it on one of the most famous moments in tech demos. You've seen it. You must have seen it because it literally is one of the fo- most famous moments, and it is hilarious. It's Bill Gates on stage giving a demonstration to Conan, and uh, something goes a little wrong. See you tomorrow, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Here, here on the screen, Yes, yes. Here this is uh, Media Center, uh, uh-huh. which is our our key product that right. really converges everything. And here's this single remote control yes. to let you navigate. Well, we're, we're in the photos section here. These are the photos we took, I think, last night. That's right. So if I click OK, I'll get a little slideshow and you'll get a, a little glimpse of what, uh, yeah. what we were up to together here. OK. All right. OK. And right now, nine people are being fired. <laughs> Digitally fired. Wireless. There's no connection. That's the beauty of it. You don't need firewall or... I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm a monkey. All right, we'll get this going. I think we... Uh, should we start? Should we just... Uh, should I just... Uh, we ready to go? Okay, the first photo here is uh, you picking me up at the airport right there. I thought that was... We seeing these at all? No? No, I don't think we are. No? I don't think we that's are. That's the problem when you have the wrong remote control. It's yeah. a good thing you only have one, though. Yeah, that's good. All right. Uh, let's Take give that one more try. Let's give it a shot and uh, let's see what we get here. And again, they just incredible. I don't know who's running things here. <laughs> who's in charge of Microsoft? Oh. Uh. <laughs> well, I think uh, they say we're ready to do the slideshow. That thing keeps blinking, so. Uh, Think, but I think not. So maybe we'll move on yet again. Yep. <laughs> I love all, that. all I have to do is click, <laughs> just click one button. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That was a powerful yup. Uh, <laughs> the yup heard round the industry. <laughs> oh my God! Bill said yup. Get out of here. Mm-hmm. <laughs>